Addison Trail is celebrating their 50 years. We're all excited to bring you some perspectives from a faculty standpoint. Stay tuned to watch some of the activities that they participated in. Hi, we're back talking about the 50th anniversary of Addison Trail High School. I'm Burke McDonald. I was a guidance department chairman for a, a number of years. I was also a counselor. Next to me is Phyllis Geyer. She was a home ec chairman and the dean at Addison Trail High School. Al Foster was the math department chairman during his tenure and also <laughs> taught math, obviously. Jim Mortier was a little bit of everything. He worked in, worked in the <laughs> athletic department as an AD. He was a PE teacher. He was a principal. Um, you name it, you did it. Were you ever working in the uh, cafeteria? Probably, oh, probably for days that you're, and yeah. I was in the dean's <laughs> office for uh, we all did. <laughs> seven years. So. Yeah. <laughs> Next to Jim is Larry Weck. He was the uh, assistant director of, uh, the assistant principal at Addison Trail. He became principal of Addison Trail, and then he left Addison Trail to, to instill better students for us in, in District 88. He became the superintendent of District 4, uh, which is our feeder district. And then next to him is Kevin Corey, who was, uh, again, a master of all trades. Right. He was an athletic director, a coach. He was a, uh, uh, a PE teacher, driver ed teacher. He taught some of the students that you might have feared your life at times. He was one of the ones teaching you. That's right. um, so we want to welcome you to this segment of it. And uh, I guess, Larry, we'll start with you. What was it like being a, a principal at Addison Trail High School? Uh, it was very interesting. Um, you know, one of the things I have been in several different districts since I retired. <laughs> and so I've been able to see what other schools do. And reflecting back on Addison Trail, it's a special place. And being a principal there was really pretty neat a lot of good people. Uh, Dr. Cook put the faculty together and I don't know who helped him but it was an outstanding group of teachers and the department heads were really good uh, leaders. They knew what they were doing. They were good in curriculum and it was a good place to be, a good place to work and I think a really good place for kids to go to school. I know when I started there I started as a scheduler and Mr. Kevin Corey really helped me, spent a lot of time and I remember that first day when the kids were going around trying to do the college style scheduling, which was traditional for Addison Trail. I looked over, you know, and I'm going, holy cow, what am I doing here? And there was Kevin. He came back up just to make sure things were going well. Could he help? And that's the way everybody did it at Addison Trail. It was really like a family. If there was a problem, people just rolled up their sleeves and solved it. They worked on it. It was a really great place to work. So being principal there was, was really very exciting and there were always things to work on, but because we were growing and we were overcrowded. And uh, when I became principal that year in 76, the new addition was added. So that made a tremendous difference. And we could get rid of a couple of periods, went down from a 10 period day to an eight period day. Kids were spread out over more square footage. So it just made things a lot better and then we could ease up. And uh, it, was, it was an exciting place. Now, I know the people at this table, a lot of them were not only uh, colleagues with Dr. Cook, but very close friends with Dr. Cook, who has recently passed away. I think it was uh, last fall he passed away. Um, can you give us some insight and some memories of Dr. Cook and what it was like working for him? Because uh, you guys were really pretty close when you were working with him. I know I always felt he was somebody you could go in and talk to. And if you had a problem or an idea, you could bounce it off of him, or uh, you could ask him his opinion. And sometimes he'd say, you know, that probably isn't going to work very well. And other times, hey, that's a great idea. Let's see what we can do to pull it more together. Uh, but what was it like working with Dr. Dr. Cook as the first principal? Did somebody want you want to? Well, start? he was very supportive. Uh, he he expected you to uh, keep him informed as to what you were doing as far as as far as the department chair people were concerned. If we wanted to do something, we'd go in and explain to him what we wanted to do and how we were going to do it, and he was very supportive in everything that at least that I wanted to do, and I'm sure that I think that was the case in most cases. Phyllis, what? 
he, he hired me, so and I worked with him for a year at York, and he worked very closely with all the department chairmen um, at Willowbrook, that were at Willowbrook and uh, Addison Trail, that were going to Addison Trail, I mean. And he was, he was very supportive, um, but he was, had high expectations, which was important, and good, especially important. coming into a new school. And then um, after <coughs> three years, he hired me as one of the deans. And he was very supportive in that capacity also. He was, knew that uh, he wanted to have a school that was safe, a good environment, and supportive of the teachers. And uh, he continued that, I would say, through his whole career. And, and I, it, it, that's a tough position, being the dean, because you have to work with keeping the f school <laughs> functioning and students working together. But then you have the parents that always hear a different point of view when they get home. And he was very supportive of, of anything that we tried to do to, in that area, right? Yes, I mean, he cared about everybody, I would say. Uh, and uh, he let you do your job. All he needed to know was if there was an issue to let him know. But I suppose that if you didn't do your job, he would tell you. But he was very supportive, right. I would say. You know, he was, uh, as a superintendent, I started as a first year principal. Right. And I called him one that fall <clears throat> when I'd started, and I said, I got a problem. I've really irritated a parent. I've told them no, and I explained <laughs> to him. There was this silence on the other line, end of the line. <laughs> I didn't know him very well. He said, Dr. Weck, if everybody likes you, I'm probably going to have to fire you. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. Thank you for telling me. Just what Mrs. Geyer said, you know, I kept him informed. But I was worried when that long silence happened, and he was probably over laughing at the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you knew him for years, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I knew him from uh, I was coaching at York, and he was the uh, athletic director for a while, I believe. Yeah, he was. And uh, he was very good, very easy to work for, but as Phyllis said, he, he was exacting, you know. He wanted he wanted it done a certain way, and uh, uh, but if you if you differed with him, and I did a couple of times, um, he Kevin, wouldn't. Kevin, I thought you were always really easy to along. <laughs> well, not always, but uh, he uh, he was the kind of a guy that uh, if if you uh, presented your your issues to him, uh, and he, he disagreed. But you, you know, you were able to go ahead with it. He always supported you, you know, as long as he gave that final okay. Jim, any? I, he was a great man. Uh, nothing but admiration for what he did as a principal and as a superintendent. Uh, the credit goes to him for all the administration that he hired to start the school, the department chairs, and the staff, because all those people, and we didn't have mass exodus. I mean, everybody got to be one big family and talk through everything, and uh, he was the boss, but it was a I, great. I know there's pictures again out in the, in the first yearbook of him out in front of that building with the yeah. plans and making sure that everything got put together right and, and pulled, pulled together, you know, the way it was supposed to be. Let's move on to, an, uh, to another principal that, uh, um, you know, was very famous there, uh, Don Lane. Uh, now, Don Lane had a completely different personality than, than uh, Dave Cook, but he also was a really pretty uh, strict taskmaster. He lived in Addison. Uh, I think he was part of the village board at one point, wasn't he? Oh, his wife, his wife, wife, his wife, wife was part. So, I mean, he was very committed to Addison, and his family was committed to Addison. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a football coach at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some memories of Don Lane as the principal? Do, do you want to start the sale with that one, of what you remember when working with Don? Well, Don was always very easy to work with. He, he was very uh, supportive of everything I wanted to do. I could yeah. just go in and explain to him what I wanted to do and how I was going to do it. And, he would just say, go do it. Yeah. Very supportive. Uh, well, <laughs> what can you say about the guy? He, I mean, he started with him coaching uh, with football and then, uh, you know, moved <clears throat> kind of behind him as athletic director and assistant principal and principal. And uh, Don was a taskmaster, but uh, his expectations were 
do your job, and he left you alone. He, I think he wanted everyone to think he was this, or wanted all the kids to think he was <laughs> right. this tough guy. Mm -hmm. And he had the biggest heart of gold of anybody. He was a teddy bear. He loved his kids. He loved the school. He had high expectations, but he, wa he wanted good people around him, and then he <laughs> let those people do their job, and he supported them. Uh, he loved the place. It's funny, I think he lived about 100 yards from the school <laughs> right. and never walked to school. He drove every day. <laughs> but he loved the place. Yeah. Now, did you coach with Don? I coached with Don, yeah. And uh, I was, uh, well, I had his, one of his sons, the boy that uh, died in an accident. Uh, I had him in, in class, too. But, uh, yeah, I, I was... My wife and I were very close to Don and, and his wife for a long time, going going back to York, and I can't say anything bad about him. And I, Phil, <laughs> you were the dean, so obviously you depended on working with him pretty closely. He, when we were at York, the gym was right here, and my room was right here. So he and I spent passing periods together <laughs> for a year before we both came to Addison Trail. So we had a really good time. Uh, doing, visiting, talking about what was going on. But then when I went to Addison Trail, and you know, I know he would say this even though he's gone, he was probably a male chauvinist. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, I think there would be a lot of people that would agree with you. That were <laughs> but he was in here. Everything that you said about him, you know, he tried to be tough, he tried to be this male chauvinist, but he, ha he couldn't be because he had a daughter who was an absolute deer and he couldn't, you yeah. know, he had, uh, I mean, she was, he was so proud of her, but it was hard for him to come out and say that until some of the women and girls got their a little bit more rights. But he was a teddy bear underneath. <laughs> and I worked with him through everything, home ec department chairman, dean, assistant principal, uh, uh, he's just a deer. He could at times be quite unique in faculty meetings. And, uh, oh, yeah. With his uh, sense of humor, uh, some people may not have thought of it as a sense of humor. Um, but uh, I think everybody felt that he really had Addison Trail at heart and that yeah. uh, he really thought Addison Trail was a very important place to work and, and, and help educate the youth of Addison. Um, um, then, you know, as the time went on, you know, we, we started probably at a time that, that things were, I wouldn't say primitive by any means, um, but obviously, a lot of things change technology-wise and other things-wise from, from the point at which we started until we left. Uh, as administrators, uh, what are some of the things that you saw come in uh, to Addison Trail from a technological standpoint that probably you wouldn't have thought of when, when you first started there? College-style scheduling. When uh, Dave came in as the principal, uh, or shortly after, he kind of liked the idea, and I did too, and I was the scheduler. <laughs> and uh, it was a fiasco, I think, is what it eventually Well, I, th I think it worked to. okay. I think what, yeah. what happened was we figured out that kids that age, 15, 16, 17 years old, would oftentimes choose classes that their friends were in as opposed to right. what they should be taking. Yeah. So I think, and I think it was a pretty complex system, but it worked pretty well. Yeah. But I think it was not in their best interest. So. Right. Well, a good example of that was the, the, uh, uh, one of the shop classes. I forget if it was woods or one of them. Anyhow, we had a class in tenth period, you know, and at that time, people could one leave. Of the yeah. And uh, we had, I think, originally on the test schedule, it went through the computer. Uh, we had a, a full class. In fact, it was overload. And uh, when it actually happened in the, in the uh, gymnasium where they signed up, it was a 10th period class. They didn't want that. So uh, we had four kids in the class. Yeah, at, th at that particular time with the technology, we were doing our scheduling on a mainframe computer over at College of the Page, a right. huge machine. We had Bunker Ramo terminals. So we'd take these cards, I'd carry these cards over, right. Right. go over to COD, and a guy named Bill Healy would run everything, and we'd well, go back and study complex. We had a, a secretary full-time to do nothing but type in the cards, right, yeah, for that, right. and attendance. Sure. And, sure. I mean, mm -hmm. it was almost a full-time job for her because, you know, everything had to be put on these cards before yes. you could deal with it. Yes, it was. 
And so that was, you know, it, it advanced to the point where, you know, you can have a computer just sitting on your desk and do the same thing. Right. I, I know at one point there was a difficulty getting the, the schedule put together, and when we checked it over after it was completed, uh, we found that there were some imbalances in the, in the sectioning. And one of the difficulties at that time was finding computer terminals to go out. That we had to get this all done before school started yes. to yes. find computers out there that people could sit down and move students around from one section to another yeah. to fit. I think we went to the library and we turned right. all those around and right. you and myself and a couple of counselors sat down and re rescheduled all those kids. It was a lot of it was a lot wow. of wow. In your case, there was. Um, a, didn't calculators come in with, they were basic computers at the time, during the time that you were? Well, we, we brought computers into the, into the school by, for the kids to use. Um, I created a, a lab or two of 24 computers in a lab or something like that, I think. And, and uh, a lot of the math students used those in some of our, several of our math classes, and then science got involved and and uh, business education got involved and it just grew rapidly from there. And you mentioned one of the jobs, besides being department chairman for a while, you were with the computer club, right? I was, and, yes. And did they, did, was that a, a, where they had competition between the schools or was it pretty much within the building? No, that was just a small group of kids that were, uh, wanted to work after school, maybe eight or 10 of them. And we, we met every week for Two or three years, and then the interest kind of after we after the kids got involved with with the computer labs, then the interest in the club waned, and there was nothing. It kind of died. But uh, okay, we, we'll go briefly on this. But does anybody want to share a secret with Dr. Weck about when he was principal? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, and no, no, nobody, nobody wants it to publicly not, talk about Not with the cameras rolling, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> a good he principal. He doesn't look any older today than he did then. Well, that's right. He does. I, I knew him. I happened to work with him before I came to Addison Trail um, at a junior high in another community. And then he came to Addison Trail and I went, wow, you know, we're following each other. He was great to work with. So, um, I'm sure still and is. And then are any stories, now you probably have some stories, not necessarily as principal, about Jim. About Jim? Oh, More tear. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I told you the one off camera, <laughs> <laughs> you know, about, about the guy. He had the, the uh, I had of Rita's credentials, of course, when we hired him, and he had the most impressive credentials I've ever seen. Well, that's Now, good. that's a positive thing. Right. Well, we, we want to be positive. There's today. one. There's one. <laughs> so, uh, yes, Larry. Uh, you know, we were we were talking about uh, Don Lane a while ago, and one of the stories on him was that uh, when he was assistant principal, and I was a principal, we were talking, and he mentioned he said, you know, Addison Trail has never really had a party together, get try to get everybody together at one time, so he organized the first party at Friars Cove for the faculty. And we invited people and we did organized it and everything. It was such a success, the secretaries came to us the next day and said, you know, you didn't invite us. Well, we didn't think they wanted to come. They said, we'll bring hors d'oeuvres if you'll invite us to the next one. <laughs> so Lane put the whole party together and it was really a success. But I think that illustrates that the faculty really worked mm -hmm. together and they were a good group and, they sure were. and it was just like a family. Well, I remember that we used to have uh, after school meetings, faculty get togethers at Louis, and uh, which is now the isn't that a, a water the retention area? Right yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, to this day, I wonder how we're all still alive because I think there was a lot of mold in that uh, place, at the yeah. time, place at the time. Uh, the high water marks. And, and was it one of you guys that started the cup of cheer when people started retiring? Was that you? No, that was that was before. I think Dr. Cook Dr. started it. Because that, that is so. something that, uh, for those of you that are not faculty members, uh, the faculty gets together every year around Christmas time. The tradition still goes on, where we come in for one day, and the, and the fun part of it is your first year is you get to sit there all day as the bell rings and people have to move on to classes and other people come in. Uh, but it's a nice way to get to see what the building's like right now and how it functions. Right. And also talk to people about what it was like back when we were there.